good evening and uh, welcome to another study the word segment or study of the Bible search the word so our theme I repeat for 2022 is search the word and this evening we're gonna search another word that is based on character building we started off what is character and today we are going to look at one word that we use so very regularly but we are going to detail it and see how it fits in with building our character and that word is n enthusiasm yes we talk about enthusiasm being enthusiastic so this evening we're going to learn what does it mean to be enthusiastic or have enthusiasm based on the scripture relating to our Christian life and building character before I start you know I love to pray and so I'm asking you to pray with me so that we can begin asking God's help. Our Father, we say thank you for this another opportunity. Lord, we thank you for your strength. We thank you for your, your love towards us. We thank you, O oh God, for your word. God, the, the psalmist said, oh, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And so God, even as we go and we search your word today, the, the Lord, you will guide us, you will help us. I pray for your Holy Spirit to help because it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by the Spirit of the Lord. And so God, have your way. Let this word, O oh God, as it touches and it reaches people, they will understand the importance of having or being enthusiastic in, as a Christian. So bless and help me in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to thank you again for your support over the last two years since we have started in our online Bible study and other services. I want to thank all our subscribers. I see we got another one and I want to say thank you for all of you who have subscribed and you are going to encourage others to do the same because we want you to hear the word of God. We want you to know what God has in store for you and also to share it to others. So we say thank you so very much. Amen. God bless. So we are going to look at this very important word, enthusiasm. And we have some scriptures that we're going to look at and then go, go on. So the first scripture we're going to look at is Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 18. It says, I'm going to read from 5, 15 to 18. It says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. So that's our first scripture. Now we're going to look at Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16 says, 
Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And it says, verse 17 says, and whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's scripture number two. And we have one more scripture, and we are looking at First Thessalonians chapter five, and we are going to look at verse. 19. Now there from verse 12 right on we have a lot of, of, of admonitions that are given to us but we are going to look at one that says do not quench the spirit. So if we are not quenching the spirit it means that we are going to be very enthusiastic. As, so, as we go along we want you to have your Bibles with you because we are going to be searching some more of the scriptures. Our purpose for this subject or this topic is, is to let you know that maintaining enthusiasm requires continuous fellowship with God's Word and the Spirit of God. Important. So enthusiasm could be high today and it could be low tomorrow. But in order for us to maintain that continuous flow or that continuous energy and as the writer says in order for us to continue in fellowship or, or having that continuous fellowship we must be in tune with God's word and the spirit of God. So enthusiasm, yes, it's good. Yes, we keep going. But to keep up with it as a Christian character or as one of the traits that build Christian character, it must be based on not how good we are, how jovial we are, how friendly we are, because after a time these things go, go a little cold. But when we are continuously searching the Word and living by the Word, the Holy Spirit is going to help us. So we understand enthusiasm or continuous enthusiasm is based on having fellowship or searching God's Word and allowing the Holy Spirit to help us. Amen. Here's a quote that I read. It says, The flame of a candle is like enthusiasm in our souls. The flame of a candle is like enthusiasm in our souls. It's self-consuming. It also says the flame of an oil lamp is like enthusiasm of our spirit continuous when properly filled. So we see a lamp or, 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 or we see a candle and uh, the wick of the lamp or the wick of the candle does not stay still. There is always that flickering, you know, it's always a flickering in it. Light a candle or light a lamp and you would see. No, that flickering does not mean it will out right away. But what keeps that flicker 
or, 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 or that flame from going is if it is in a lamp and it has sufficient oil it will burn until that oil runs out and what is it saying to me it is saying in order for us to be burning or continuing in enthusiasm in the the spirit or in our christian life our lives have to be filled with god's word and to be filled with the holy spirit that flame in the lamp remains lighted and bright because there is sufficient oil in the 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 the, 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 the jar where the oil is placed when that oil runs out you know sometimes the flame doesn't go out right away it begins to fade and it gets dim and then it gets dimmer and then it goes out and that's what happened to us as believers if we are not in, in, in tune or if we are not consistent in God's word and allowing the Holy Spirit to help us then our lights begin to get dim and you know something sometimes we are not even aware our lights are dim now you put the candle or you put the lamp in a place and you leave it thank you Jesus and you leave it and if you do not attend to it by the time you check it out whether it's an a hour later or what you realize that the candle burned down a certain way and the lamp begins to dim now if you don't check it at all by the time you reach everything is burnt out this is a powerful thought and i want us to take note of it and you see so sometimes as a believer we might have the hip the enthusiasm i probably is in church sound going good probably we don't have any problems things are going good but when situation faces us if we are not connected to god if we are not connected to the word our lamps spiritual lamps and lights will begin to grow dim and if we don't pay attention to the signs of our lamp the lamp in our life we will grow we will fade out our lamps will 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 shut down and then when we do realize it we're in a bad place in our christian life and so i choose this topic today because i want us to be aware in order for us to be continuously what enthusiastic about god and about god's word we have to attend to our life we have to attend to the light in our life and we have to attend to that by the help of the holy spirit i want to give you a definition of enthusiasm now we have a couple definitions i'm not using any slides this week but i want you to have your pens and your paper so it tells us the word enthusiasm is made up of two greek words n e n meaning i n and theos which means god so when we talk about enthusiasm we are talking about n the greek word e n and also the greek word theos which means god so to be enthusiastic is to be energized and to be inspired by god take note of that to be enthusiastic 
based on the Greek meaning is to be energized and to be inspired by God. Now we have some biblical words that will define enthusiasm based on the scripture. We have our first word talks about being fervent in the spirit. So the, the let's say the counterpart for enthusiasm based on the scripture is to be fervent in spirit. What does it mean to be fervent in spirit? I'm going slowly so you can get some notes as I don't have any slides this week. It simply means to be fervent in spirit is to boil with heat. Mm. To be hot. It is said as boiling with genuine love for God and for others. So the Greek term fervent or enthusiasm means fervent. And that fervent based on the explanation it says is to boil with heat to be hot as though we are boiling with genuine love for God and for others so when we become a Christian we can stay cold remember the scripture says you are neither hot nor cold and what does God says in Revelation he will spur you out or spit you out of his mouth because you are neither hot nor cold but he says I rather you be hot and that's where fervent comes in so in order for us to remain hot or to be re to be enthusiastic in God we have to have a be, be boiling as the, the, the writer says, to be boiling with genuine love for God and for others. Hmm. How hot are you as a believer? How enthusiastic are you as a believer? And so the biblical term fervent means to boil with heat and have that love for God and others. There's another biblical term that defines the word enthusiasm. And that biblical word is zeal. It comes from the Greek word zealos. Z or Z E L O S. So, another biblical word, you will find it in the scripture is zeal. Zeal comes from the Greek word zealous. And what does zealous mean? Zealous mean excitement of your mind. How excited are you for God? So if we are saying as believers we have to be zealous or we have to be enthusiastic it starts where in the mind and the, the 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 explanation or the definition says it says not only does it start in the mind it says but it's a fervor of spirit oh my goodness it talks about embracing and pursuing or defending someone or something. So when I have that fervor, when I have that enthusiasm, when I have that zeal, it will not be just like what you'll say an emotional kind of play or, or an emotional feeling. It will be all in my mind. I would have been so consumed by the love of God, the passion to reach others. It will show through my spirit or it will be demonstrated in my Christian character. Enthusiasm 
is important as a, a Christian trait or building Christian character. Number three. So we have three words that define enthusiasm, biblically speaking. So the first word we had fervent. And fervent means to boil with heat and to show genuine love for God and for others. Number two is zeal. And zeal talks about excitement. We are excited about God. We are excited about the things of God. And we are excited about others that they can reach, they can be reached through our excitement for God. And now we have a third one. And that third one, biblically speaking, is called earnest. And this word earnest is a Hebrew word that means shara, C-H-A-R-A-H. -H. That's the Hebrew word for earnest. And they said earnest means to be hot, just like the Greek word fervent. It means to be hot. It means to be to act furiously as though, wow, I can't contain myself. So sometimes when you see people in church, some of them, not all of them, but some of them who are really worshiping God, most of them worship with some kind of enthusiasm. And this morning we learn in our sermon from one of our members that enthusiasm doesn't mean we are right. That was a powerful point. So sometimes we could be enthusiastic about the wrong thing for the wrong purpose. Um, but we are saying here the enthusiasm that we are going to demonstrate, it will be based on our, 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 our what should I say? Our hotness, which will be based on how we love God, how deeply God's word affects our lives that we cannot keep quiet. Amen. And so it tells us that word earnest coming from the Hebrew word shara means to be hot. It means to act furiously or it means to burn and is also expressed in a Greek word so the Hebrew for it is shara c-h-a-r-a-h and the Greek word for it is s-t-i-r-a-t-o it means to jump it means to leap with joy. <clears throat> I am so excited about God. I am so enthused because of who God is and because of what God has done. And I'm not just enthusiastic in a vain way, in just an emotional way. I'm enthusiastic based on I know who God is. I know what God has done for me. Oh, we had a wonderful worship session in church on Sunday. A wonderful worship session we had in church. And it says that I know who God is. That's why I worship him. That's why I give him praise. And I'm giving him praise out of a, 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 a fervent spirit. I'm giving him praise with zeal. I'm giving him praise with earnestness because I love God. Amen. Amen. And so I'm going to leap and show and jump for joy. Amen. Brethren, every believer 
every believer is instructed to be enthusiastic in our Christian life. Be fervent in spirit. <clears throat> That's what the word of God says. We need to be fervent. We need to boil over with, hallelujah. We need to boil over with heat. We need to be having genuine love for God. Genuine love for others. And so I encourage all of us that we will seek after this character trait to develop our Christian life one of enthusiasm not one of as I said before just vain words just, just emotion running left right and center no I'm going to be fervent in spirit because I'm seeking the Lord I'm going to be hot I'm going to be jumping for joy because the joy of the Lord is my strength amen I want to talk about what are we to be enthusiastic about. There are many things that we could be enthusiastic about. But based on our study and searching God's word, we want to let you know as a believer what you are to be enthusiastic about. I have six points. I am not going to do all today. I'm going to do part and then the other week we are going to do the other part because I want us to get it and I want us to search the word of God with me. So the first thing that we are to be enthusiastic about is about God. I like that. It's starting in the right place. Now where do we find some script here to back this up? So you have your Bibles. Remember is search the word. So we are going to look at Acts chapter 22 Look for it. Acts chapter 22. And we're going to talk about a man that all of us or many of us know. And his writings have influenced our lives greatly. His writings causes us many times to check our lives the other writers also but this man his name is Paul Paul was very enthusiastic about God what am I to be enthusiastic about based on the scripture the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 22 and verse 3, Paul is saying here, I am indeed a Jew born in Tarsus of Cilicia, but brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel, taught according to the strictness of our father's laws and was zealous towards God as you all are today. What was Paul talking about? Paul was standing, you know, before the, the, the crowd and and he was making a defense. You see, because before he became a Christian, he was saying 
I was very zealous. I, I, I was teaching. I was going after the Christians, just like you are going after me today. Because I thought I was right. And so he was making a defense. He says, my defense before you now, and when they heard he spoke to them in Hebrew language, they kept all the more silent because they were accusing him of, of being overzealous for the things of the Lord, something he did in his past and thought he was right. Enthusiasm doesn't always mean we are right. And so Paul is saying the first thing we need to do is to be enthusiastic about God. He is saying before his conversion he had the same zeal and now he's taking this zeal and he has now transferring it, it to the real God. He's transferring it for the real purpose now. He has purpose, genuine, real purpose. He's now hot for God. He's hot in the right way. And so as he's standing, he says, however, the zeal that I had before my conversion, it was zeal without knowledge. It was zeal based on the tradition of men. It was zeal based on how I was taught. I was taught that if I persecuted the Christians, if I killed out the Christians, I would be working for God. And again, this word enthusiasm doesn't mean we are right. We could have it, but we have to have it for the right purpose. And we must have it with knowledge. Paul is saying, yes, I was enthusiastic. I was going after them Christians like crazy as it were. I was killing them out. I was even there when Stephen died. I consented to his death. I was zealous. Oh, hallelujah. But I was zealous with the wrong purpose, for the wrong purpose. I didn't have it right. I had knowledge or I had zeal without knowledge. I want us to check our lives today. And this is a good lesson for me. And it's a lesson for every one of us, especially those of us who are called Christians or born again. See the motive for which you do things. Why do I worship God? Why do I praise God? Why do I go to church? Why do I give my gifts, monetary gifts to the church? Why do I do these things? And do I do it because I say I'm a Christian. But what is the real motive behind it? And, and as I studied this, I came face to face with the same question. Why am I so enthusiastic about sharing God's word? Why am I so enthusiastic about wanting to be in church? Why am I so enthusiastic about helping others? Is it because I want people to see? Is it because I want to be told, oh, she's a church goer, she's a church goer? Whatever it is. But Paul is saying here, I need to be enthusiastic about God, but I have to have the right purpose. I have to have the right motive. I must know that the zeal that I have for God is based on the scriptures and based upon what God expects. And so Paul was making his defense before these Sanhedrin or the Pharisees and all the rest of them. And he was saying, 
I was very zealous. I was zealous in the tradition of my forefather. If we look at Galatians chapter 1, try to find it. Corinthians, Galatians, Galatians chapter 1 and verse, let me see what I have right. We're going to look at verses 11 to 14. Here's what he said. But I make known to you, brethren, that the gospel was preached, that the gospel which was preached, sorry, by me, is not according to man. For I neither receive it from man, nor was I taught it, but it came to me through the revelation of the Holy Spirit. For you have heard my former conduct in Judaism, how I persecuted the church of God beyond measure, and I tried to destroy it. Paul is standing, and he's making or giving his testimony. He says, and I advance Judaism beyond many of my contemporaries in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous for the traditions of my father. Read it over. Paul is saying to you, and he's saying to me, I need to be zealous. I need to be enthusiastic. Remember the word enthusiasm? It means to be fervent. It means to be zealous or have zeal. And it also means to be earnest. He said, I was zealous. I, I, I had an enthusiasm to do what I thought was right. And in verse 13 says, he said, I was so enthusiastic in what I believe in the traditions of my forefathers that I persecuted the church of God beyond measure and tried to destroy it. He said, I did that in my own zeal. Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. Are we learning? Are we getting something? It tells us in the Webster's Dictionary it describes the word enthusiasm I want us to take note of this as a transformation of zeal and it matures into what is called enthusiasm. It defines enthusiasm, that's the Webster, Webster's Dictionary. It defines enthusiasm as a violent passion or excitement of the mind. Wasn't this what Paul described in here in the scripture? It also says, based on the dictionary, it says it's an it 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 is it, a pursuit of some object inspiring confidence of success. Whatever I do in my mind or coming from my mind. I am looking at success. I want to be successful. So again, let's look at enthusiasm from the biblical standpoint. 
the biblical standpoint tells us that to be enthusiastic it means to be energized or inspired by God so when I'm energized by God it doesn't take over my emotions per se but it will take over my mind it will start from my head and when I become so enthused with who God is and what God has done for me it's now going to manifest himself in wanting to be successful in what I do I hope I get that over and so the dictionary is saying I'm not just only going to, 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 to display enthusiasm or excitement or passion he says but I am going to do it with confidence to be successful Oh, bless the Lord. When we have our enthusiasm for God, God wants us to be successful, but it is not by might. It is not by power, but it's by the Holy Spirit. The dictionary continues to say, this word enthusiasm, it, it, it talks about the heat of our imagination. It talks about that passion. It, the, the writer says from the Webster, it's a noble passion. It's an ardent zeal. It prompts me to go after things, or the writer says, objects. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, do you feel that enthusiasm in your spirit? And when we have that enthusiasm in our spirit, we want to go after the things of God. It will not be temporary. It will not be hot today and cold tomorrow. It will be consistently hot. We will be consistently burning up with zeal and not because we want people to see, but because we know what God has done for us and so we want to share it so Paul is saying here the first thing that we have to be enthusiastic about is to be enthusiastic about God amen number two did we get that number two the other thing that we want to look at today is to be enthusiastic about loving others. Be passionate about loving others. Have that zeal. I go back again to the Greek word. The Greek word which says fervent and thus it tells us we have to be boiling with genuine love for God and for others. So if I have to be enthusiastic in my Christian life, it must not be just about God. That's number one. But it includes others. It includes how we treat others how we deal with others, how we respect others, how we care about others, how accountable are we to others. Sometimes we feel, well, I serve in God, I love God, I, 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 um, they know I love God, and, and we make all sorts of excuses, but listen to me being enthusiastic about God it also means to love others as we love God or as we love ourselves and to be accountable no man is an island and so the word of God is saying as we look in first Peter chapter 4 and verse 8 Here's what it tells us how 
enthusiastic we, sh we should be about others. Let's look at First Peter chapter, I'm looking to chapter 4. And we are looking at verses 4 to 7. Sorry. Oh, I got my script there mixed up. Sorry. We are looking at chapter 4. Oh, I was looking at the wrong chapter. Sorry. Let's look at verse 4. In regard to these things they think it strange that you do not run with them in the same flood and we come back to this word dissipation speak an evil of you for this reason the gospel was preached also to those who are dead that they might be judged according to men in the flesh but live according to God in the spirit verse 7 says but the end of all things is at hand therefore be serious and watchful in prayer and verse 8 and above all things have fervent love for one another for love will cover a multitude of sins verse 9 says be hospitable to one another without grumbling be hospitable towards one another without grumbling how enthusiastic should I be about others Paul says the scripture I would say this is Peter above all things have fervent charity among yourselves the script I just read is from the NIV and it says above all things have fervent love for one another fervent love for one another means that we show love in a genuine way what does fervent mean we're going back to the Greek meanings it says to be fervent is to be fervent in spirit is to boil over with heat and to be boiling with genuine love for God and for one another brethren listeners enthusiasm is not only dealing with an emotional expression of how we feel and how we feel towards God it's more than that it is how we treat our brethren he says the scripture says boil over with love it says show that person how important they are to God as you think you are important to God you know this is where we fall down sometimes or oh, we could be so zealous but we so careless as how we treat our brothers and our sisters we feel once I please God that's okay that's a lie from the pit of hell because the Bible says we are our brother's keeper 
we are to be dear for each other. And here the scripture is saying, the believer, the Corinthian, the Corinthian Christian believers, they showed great love towards Paul. And Titus told us, he says, yes, you have to be earnest in your desire. You have to be, have a fervent mind towards me so that I rejoice the more. So it's not only Paul that you have to show that fervent love for. You have to show love for me too. Yeah. And when you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 7, read it for yourself. Here is what the Word of God says. Let's look at it. We are searching the Word, so we are in no hurry. So we are looking at 1 Corinthians, oh sorry, 2 Corinthians. Find it? Chapter 7 and verse 7. Have you found it? All right, here's what it tells us. It says from verse 6, Nevertheless, God who comforts the downcast comforted us by the coming of Titus. And not only by his coming, but also by the consolation with which he was comforted in you when he told us of your earnest desire, your mourning, your zeal for me, so that I rejoice evermore. So Paul was saying that Titus reported to him that the people loved him. And they showed it. He said, when they were downcast, they needed comforted, comforting. And they were comforted, they were comforted by Titus. Titus came and he comforted them. They were in a, a, a maybe a downcast position. Maybe things were not so hot with them, whatever that might be. But they had someone who understood them. They had someone who cared. And he didn't only care for Paul, but he cared for the people. And so the Bible tells us in our enthusiasm, in our love for God, show love for your brethren, your fellow men. And I'm not just talking fellow men here about Christians in your church or Christian, the Christian world. I'm talking about people in general. Let our enthusiasm go outside of a Christian box, as I would say, our Christian circle, and think about people who are suffering in the world. We know a lot. Those who have family members die, those who are in the war. How many parents are losing children? We just heard about the Texas massacre when 19 children were gunned down with two teachers and those who landed up in the hospital. Our love must reach out to them. We may never see them in this life. We may never hear much about them after. But Paul is saying, or the Word of God is saying, let's not just be enthusiastic about those we know and those who are around us, but let's go outside of our box, as I might say, our circles, and reach out to them. We have to love God with a passion 
to go outside of our circles. Yeah. Sometimes we love God. And even in our prayers, it's just around that which we know, that which we are familiar with. But God wants us to be enthusiastic about helping others, even those we do not know. Even those, as the scripture says, Titus went to those who were downcast and he comforted them. Open your ears to listen out for those who need comfort. And as we build our Christian character, we will build our love for others. It also tells us here in First Peter chapter 1 and verse 22. Let's look at it. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 22. Are you seeing it? Okay. It said, since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit in sincere love of the brethren love one another fervently with a pure heart love one another fervently with a pure heart again we go back you might say, Pastor, repeating yourselves. Repetition brings better understanding and learning. And so the word enthusiasm in the Greek, it means to be energized and be inspired, hallelujah, by God. I say to you today, be inspired by God to show genuine love to God and to others. I just want to do one more. I hope I have the time. What is another thing that we need to be enthusiastic about? We need to be enthusiastic about prayer. And I like this one. So we're going to look at James chapter 5. And we are looking at verse 16. No, let's go from verse 13. I have the scriptures marked out, but we're going to look a little more at verse chapter 5, verses 13 to 16. It says... Is any among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed any sins, he will be forgiven. Confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. You can look at Isaiah chapter 33 and verse 4 in your spare time 
and Numbers chapter 11 and verse 12. And verse 17 says, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed earnestly. Did we come across that word earlier in our, our, our study? Yes, we came across that word. The Hebrew word translated earnestly, it means to be hot, to be furiously, to act furiously, or to burn. And it says it's an enthusiasm that could cause us to jump for joy. And so the scripture is telling us here that Elijah was a man with a nature like us. It says, and he prayed fervently, he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. And what did he do again? He prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth produced fruits. Amen. What are we to be enthusiastic about? We have to be enthusiastic about prayer. And this is not just prayer meeting, which we need to be a little more fervent with. But it means that we have to understand while we are enthusiastic in church and we could shout and praise the Lord, it's also important to come together to pray. And it's also important to remember when we come together what is the motive of us coming together. The scripture tells us that when we are enthusiasm about prayer, here's what it says. We are going to pray for persons who might be suffering. So when we come to our prayer session, we are going to go past what we know and we are going to ask God to direct us to maybe people who are suffering. All of that in enthusiasm? Yes. So sometimes the word enthusiasm goes off like bubbly, bubbly, bubbly. But it has requirements. It has things that we need to work towards so that this enthusiasm could keep hot. This enthusiasm could keep boiling over. This enthusiasm could be earnest. You see, if our enthusiasm is temporary or up to the and down tomorrow, we don't even feel like coming prayer meeting because we don't know the purpose. We don't see the need for coming prayer meeting. But Paul is saying, Bates or James is saying in the scripture that we must be enthusiastic about prayer and not only are we to be enthusiastic about prayer but we must have purpose we must know why we are coming to prayer otherwise prayer meeting would be a just oh god a prayer meeting again a drudgery kind of thing because we don't understand the importance and the purpose for which we come some are very enthusiastic and that's really good but we all need to get a little more enthusiasm about prayer the benefits and the purpose of prayer it tells us so that when we come together to pray enthusiasm will tell us there are people who are suffering Enthusiasm will tell us there are people who are sick based on the scriptures. Enthusiasm will tell us that maybe we may have to call to get help in our prayer session. Enthusiasm will tell us that we are praying for people who might be downcast. Hallelujah. And so I am encouraging us Yes, enthusiasm means we must be bubbling, we must be fervent, we must be hot, but we must also be hot in prayer. 
we must also be bubbling over or boiling over to pray and to know why we are praying and for whom we are praying. The Bible says, and we must understand that when we pray, the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up from the dead. So we are not just saying, oh God, remember this person. It says the effective fervent prayer. So when we come, we are going to be effective. We are going to be fervent as we pray. And the Bible tells us as we pray, the prayer of the righteous avail much. So it is not praying amiss. Our prayer is not going to be in the wind blowing here and there, but it's going to avail. And the Bible tells us Epaphras E-P-A-P-H-R-A-S I can't pronounce his name properly is a one of Paul's servants or believers who prayed with him regularly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Bible tells us one last scripture we're going to look at is in Colossians chapter chapter 4. Paul was talking about Epaphoratus, Epaphoratus, excuse me. He says, here's what he says. For I bear him record that he had a great zeal for you. And then for those at Laodicea and for them in Hierapolis. So this young man, a servant of God, he prayed for believers. When we come to pray, let us pray for the believers, those who know God those who might be going through some situations, some trials. And so we are going to be very enthusiastic for people. Let's look at it quick. In Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians. All right, let's look at Colossians. Uh, Sorry. Colossians chapter 4. Find it. I have it marked off here. 12 and 13. Epaparaphas, who is one of you? A bad servant of Christ. He greets you always, laboring fervently for you in prayer. Let's look at the scripture. Why was he so enthusiastic about praying for the believers? Here's what the scripture says. He was praying, fer hallelujah, fervently that these believers will stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. He was praying that they will stand. We are living in evil days. We are living in days that if we are not hot in Christ, for want of an expression, if we don't have that zeal, if we don't have that enthusiasm, if we don't have that fervency or that earnestness, our, our, our zeal for God will wane, it will go down. And so this young servant of God, he says he not only praying for those who are sick and those who are going through, maybe the, who are downcast, but he's praying for something important, that the fellow believer will stand 
we need to pray for one another. And the scripture says, continue earnestly in prayer. That's Colossians chapter 4 and verse 2. Continue earnestly in prayer. Be vigilant in it with thanksgiving. Meanwhile, pray for us. What are we to be enthusiastic about? First of all, we are going to be enthusiastic about God. We are going to be enthusiastic about loving others. And we are going to be enthusiastic about prayer. The next time we meet God's willing, we're going to do about three more and then you will get a whole picture of what enthusiasm means as a character trait as we build this Christian life. May God bless you. I want you to be hot. I want you to be boiling over with enthusiasm in God and for God and for others. May God keep you. And my prayer tonight is that you will not be found in a lukewarm position, but you will be hot. As the scripture says, you will be zealous, you will be fervent, you will be earnest, and you will leap for joy because of God who lives in you. Could we pray? As I pray, maybe some of you might be downcast. Maybe some might be sick. Maybe some might be having struggle in an area. Maybe some might be backslidden. Maybe some didn't understand enthusiasm is not just about shouting and praising. It's about others. It's about prayer. And you might want God to help you. The Bible says, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man avails much. James chapter 5 and verse 16. Let us pray. Father, thank you for this study tonight. Thank you, God, because you want us to be hot. You want us to be boiling over. You want us to be enthusiastic about who you are, what you have done for us. But we need to understand the true meaning of enthusiasm. Lord, it means loving you. It means caring for, hallelujah. It means caring for others. And it means praying one for the other. So, Father, I pray that you will help all of us, those who might be sick, touch the day. Those who might be downcast, raise them up. Those who might be struggling in some area, help them tonight. Oh, God, wherever they are this evening, those who are, are, are wailing coal, those who are, are hanging in the balances because they are neither hot nor cold, I pray for them tonight that you will minister. Lord, give us that real enthusiasm to stay on top in spite of because it's not by might. It's not by power, but it's by your spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Till we see you next time, have a wonderful rest of the week. Love you. Bye-bye.